Dominion Voting Systems is suing Fox News for defamation over the election lies that they spread in 2020, and they're seeking $1.6 billion in damages. Now, if they win, I don't necessarily know that if they're fully rewarded, that's enough to bankrupt Fox News, but I'm certainly crossing my fingers. Now, thanks to the discovery process, we're getting to see some of the text messages between Fox News hosts, and they are very interesting because it confirms that they knew that Trump's big lie was indeed that, a lie. But on top of that, they're also very fearful of Fox News and fearful of their audience. And they were worried that if they didn't play into Trump's narrative, that they would lose support and potentially be outflanked from the right by other far-right outlets such as Newsmax and OAN. So here's a couple of messages that we're going to look at, specifically sent by Tucker Carlson. These, I think, are very, very telling in particular. These were described by Slate. On November 5th, Carlson seemed to acknowledge that there was a financial incentive for Fox News to go along with Trump's fraudulent claims about the election, while also acknowledging just how dangerous they were. Quote, we worked really hard to build what we have. Those f***ers are destroying our credibility. It enrages me. The primetime host continued to express to the producer his belief that his team had to kowtow to Trump. Quote, what Trump's good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. He also told a producer, do the executives understand how much credibility and trust we've lost with our audience? We're playing with fire for real. An alternative like Newsmax could be devastating to us. On November 10th, Carlson said to his producer that it had been a mistake to not present Trump's voter fraud claims while also acknowledging, I just hate this shit. <laughs> On November 12th, Carlson took another turn talking about Fox reporter Jacqui Heinrich's tweet fact-checking the lies Trump and certain Fox News hosts were spewing about Dominion. He texted Sean Hannity, please get her fired. Seriously, what the f***? I'm actually shocked. It needs to stop immediately, like tonight. It's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is down. Not a joke. Carlson then informed Hannity that he just went crazy on an executive over Heinrich's accurate reporting. The next morning, Heinrich deleted her tweet. Wow. Around November 16th, Carlson was sharing with his producer his thoughts on the statements Powell was making, which Fox News had been airing. Quote, Sidney Powell is lying, f***ing b he also described Powell as unguided missile and dangerous as hell, calling her a crazy person. On November 8th, Carlson told fellow host Laura Ingram that Sidney Powell is lying, by the way. I caught her. It's insane. Of Powell's and Giuliani's claims about fraud, Carlson said, it's unbelievably offensive to me. Our viewers are good people and they believe it. On November 21st, Carlson sent a text message saying it was shockingly reckless to accuse Dominion of fraud without some proof, which he insisted there isn't. He also referred to Powell as a nutcase. And on January 6th of 2021, after the insurrection attempt, Carlson texted a producer that Trump was a demonic force, a destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. So this is fascinating to me because it gives us all a bit of a behind the scenes look at the way that propaganda is manufactured. For years now, Tucker Carlson has very carefully crafted a propaganda program that is highly effective. But just like that, somebody who's more influential than him, Donald Trump, could undermine this credibility that he's built up with his audience. And these text messages and some, they demonstrate a real dilemma between the need to tell the truth or the desire to tell the truth and not wanting to go along with a narrative, but then feeling pressure to do so because if you don't, then, um, it's going to hurt your credibility. And they were right to fear their credibility taking a hit with their audience because a morning consult poll conducted between November 9th and 16th found that Fox News' approval rating among Republican viewers had nosedived. So their average approval dropped 13 points and their unfavorability almost hit 30 percent. Again, this is among Republicans. So you see this sharp decline in support. And that's because Fox News didn't explicitly go along with Trump's election lies. Now, they still platformed it. They aired the press conferences of Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell. But what what the audiences were looking for from Fox News as hosts was bias confirmation. They wanted to be affirmed in their belief that the election was stolen and Trump couldn't possibly lose. Now, Trump uh, or Fox News rather still did enough to where they're being sued for defamation. And I think you can argue that Dominion has a very solid case because what county is going to want to use Dominion voting systems now after they have been thoroughly slandered by Sidney Powell, Donald Trump, 
And these lies were amplified by Fox News. I mean, they have a very solid case. So to see Fox News hosts in the background scramble while just kind of playing the press conferences, playing the insanity, trying to really ride the fence there, it's so fascinating. Now, what did they do next? That's the question, right? Because they didn't do enough to play to Trump's base here and give into his lies. So what did they do to regain credibility? Well, they did damage control. That's what they did. So basically, rather than explicitly saying that Trump's big lies were correct, they pandered to this audience. So there's a segment from Tucker Carlson that aired, I believe, January 26th of 2021. And what he did there it really demonstrates how effective he is as a propagandist because he brings on Mike Lindell, right? Mike Lindell was just deplatformed from multiple outlets because he was spreading lies about Dominion and the 2020 election. So Tucker Carlson brings him on. And rather than trying to get to the bottom of these claims and debunk what he's saying or press him on these claims, Tucker Carlson frames this in a different way. So that way he can carefully platform these ideas while not explicitly lending credits to these claims. So Mike Lindell, is going to be the victim of a censorship campaign. And that's the way that Tucker Carlson is going to present this information to his audience, January 26th, by the way, 2021. And um, just watch what he says after Mike Lindell is done saying these insane lies that we now know Tucker believed to be untrue. I've been all in trying to find the machine fraud and we found it. We have all the evidence. So at all these ven all these outlets that have been calling me from the Washington Post, New York Times, every every outlet in the country, they go, Mike Lindell, there's no evidence and he's making fraudulent statements. No, I have the evidence. I dare people to put it on. I dare Dominion to sue me because then it would get out faster. So this is it, you know, they don't they don't want to talk about it. They don't want no, to they say don't. they just say, oh, you're wrong. And I'm going, well, they're, you know, they're what? not making conspiracy theories go away by doing that. You don't answer. Right. You don't you don't make oh. people kind of calm down and get reasonable and moderate by censoring them. You make them yeah. way crazier. Of course, this is like ridiculous. Yeah. They, like, you know, I, why would everybody want to know the truth of this country? Just let let the truth be told. If there's nothing to hide, let's bring it out so we all yeah, can see it. Definitely. Instead, they're exactly. trying to erase Mike Lindell and erase my pillow. Well, I'm not going to be erased. I mean, all these, all my friends that lost their, they lost their YouTube channels. They lost their Facebook, 2 million followers. One guy has 12 employees. He's gone. His livelihood he built up is just gone. Um, anybody, any business churches that supported the president, that's a whole nother issue. They're being attacked and they're going to be just, you know, canceled. No, I've, I've noticed. Mike Lindell, I really appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you very well, much. Well, thank you, Tucker. Thanks for having me on, and God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Mike Lindell, he sells pillows. Why has he been censored? And by the way, before you say, oh, it's Mike Lindell. Who? Anyone who's censored has been wronged as an American, period. And the censorship of any person diminishes the rest of us and diminishes this country, period. It doesn't matter what they're saying. It doesn't matter whether you agree with them. So as you saw there, no pushback whatsoever. Maybe Tucker Carlson disagrees with Mike Lindell, but certainly regardless if they agree or disagree, that's no excuse for censorship. That right there is a very effective propaganda tactic, right? Because you're not actually addressing the substance. You're not trying to, in your capacity as a journalist, get to the bottom of what the truth is. You're just platforming these ideas and you're presenting the individual spreading these false claims as the victim, a victim of censorship. Doesn't free speech matter above all? This is why I say Tucker Carlson is a very effective propagandist because he knows what he's doing. He knows how to sit on the fence and appease both sides. And he wasn't doing that because Trump was very adamant that every single person echo what he was saying. But by January 26, Tucker Carlson was able to regain control of the narrative. At that time, Trump was deplatformed. He couldn't spew that message on Twitter. He didn't have Truth Social at the time. So Tucker Carlson was able to monopolize the narrative once again. And guess what? It worked because a year later, Fox News's credibility had fully recovered and tucker carlson was able to promote the big lie in order to regain credibility among fox's audience while not explicitly endorsing it himself that is very clever very very clever so this shows you how propaganda works and if fox news's audience genuinely cared about the truth they would see these text messages and they would think wow 
this is very clearly a network with an agenda. They very clearly are trying to push a message and they care more about the bottom line than the truth. But that's not going to happen. This is an audience of individuals who just want their biases to be affirmed. They don't care about the truth. They just want to be told every single day that Democrats bad, socialism bad, communism bad, Trump good. That's it. That's why they tune in. And the second that Fox News deviates away, they will stray to an alternative. Now, lucky for Fox News, OAN and Newsmax are not actually good competitors to Fox News at this point in time because Fox News, I think, rode that line very, very well, getting that credibility back. But this is really interesting because, again, anytime you are confronted with somebody who actually believes the lies spewed by individuals at, at Fox News, be it Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, or Sean Hannity, show them these text messages. It's probably not going to convince them, but it's at least some evidence that validates the point that these are actors and they don't care about truth. They don't care about objectivity. They care about an agenda and framing the narrative, period, end of story. Now, this isn't surprising to you or myself, but maybe a few Fox News viewers will see this and think, oh, okay, I'd rather care about seeking the truth more than anything. Doubtful, but I mean, we're talking small numbers, maybe one or two people out of the whole country. So, you know, we'll work with what we can, but either way, very, very fascinating. And Fox News hosts were frauds, but you already knew that, I'm sure. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.